Hi, my name is Samantha Gould, and this is my final project for Women's Studies 113, run by Professor Claxton. We were all prompted to pick a woman or a women's association, and I chose Margaret Sanger. The reason she intrigued me specifically is just the fact that she was the founder of the American Reproductive Rights Movement, also known as the Birth Control Movement in the United States. Although she sounds like such an amazing activist and pioneer for the birth control movement, things started to take a turn while researching her information, but I'll get into that later. First, let's look into our timeline from the beginning key events that led to her contribution as well as challenges she had to endure. Of course, she was born September 14th, 1879. She had a great big family. She had 11 siblings and she grew up very religious with the Roman Catholic Church. Her mother's tragic death then struck her interest to begin nursing in 1896. Nursing, she then graduated 1902. But in 1902, she didn't just graduate nursing school, she got married to William Singer, an architect, where they have three children. Then looking at 1910, she moved to New York City and became a member of the Women's Committee of New York, where she participated in women's labor protests and strikes in Lawrence, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. While these are all pretty broad, they help introduce her motivation of being an activist and why she was known as such a good activist for that time. Looking at these key events actually had an immense contribution of her motivation that ultimately led her to become the founder. Her main reason to commit to nursing school was her tragic mother's death. PBS.org gave a statement from Mar Margaret Sanger reading how she told her father, you caused this. Mother is dead from having too many children. Margaret Sanger said that because of her mother's 18 pregnancies. While she was the 11, while she, with the 11 child births that she had and seven miscarriages. When Margaret Sanger was in nursing school, she met so many immigrant mothers who were deeply impacted by unwanted pregnancies or forced slash botched miscarriages. These women were lacking effective contraceptives, and when these women were faced with another unwanted pregnancy, they resorted to back alley abortions. It was after those botched abortions that Sanger was usually called in to care for these women, which is when she developed her huge passion to be the person to provide women with information regarding safe and effective contraceptives. There are many instances where she was seen to use her anger to turn an action, and most of that stemmed from her starting her whole movement in the time of the Comstock Law. The Comstock Law was simply meaning that it was illegal to distribute birth control information or even discuss it as well as providing women with such contraceptives, and she held the secret and often distributed it on helping women limit their family size, and she said that in order to change the law, she had to break the law. All this, motion, all this motivation all led to her commitments, which she made it her mission to, one, provide women with birth control information, two, repeal the Comstock law that was stopping her from doing anything with her movement, and three, ultimately creating a clinic for birth control. Now let's look at some of her two main accomplishments that she had with her various challenges that she had to overcome. In 1914, she launched the Woman Rebel that advocated for birth control and shared contraceptive techniques. But like it is in its name, it was simply her collecting the attention of the US government, which indicted her and instead of her risking 20 years in prison, she fled and she lived in England for a year. In 1915, she returned to the United States where all the charges were dropped against her. Moving on to 1916, this is when she opened her very first birth control clinic in Brooklyn, which led to the obvious arrests of her for 30 days. While the media runs everything today, it ran everything back then as well, because that gained her a lot of attention and brought her various supporters, but it ultimately led to the closings of the clinics. But when she was ultimately able to overcome all those challenges, she and many others opened a clinic in 1923 staffed by female doctors, which we all know, know it as today as Planned Parenthood Federation of America. After that came a flow of accomplishments over the next few years regarding birth control, where doctors were able to prescribe birth control and the legalization and usage of such contraceptives were allowed. With helpful information from womenhistory.org, it helps state that in 19... 
29, she formed the National Committee of Federation Legislation for Birth Control that would allow doctors to prescribe birth control. Despite resistance from doctors and religion, Sanger's effort led to the legalization and usage of con on contraceptives. In 1936, the courts made it legal for doctors to prescribe birth control. Yay. And like she wanted, the Comstock Law ended in 1965, sadly a year before her death, but also awesomely a year before her death. When the Supreme Court case, Griswold versus Connecticut, the court ruled that the private usage of contraceptives was a constitutional right. Now, what we're looking at is a quote that I put that was published on an article on suppression in June 1914 by Margaret Sanger, which reads, A woman's body belongs to herself alone. It is her body, and it does not belong to the church. It does not belong to the United States of America or to any other government on the face of the earth. And as a woman, I simply will just be able to say, amen. But like all heroes, she was imperfect. Some may even say evil. Due to an uprise in social media, it has recently led to Margaret Sanger's name being stripped completely off of Planned Parenthood due to her racist legacy. That took a fast turn, didn't it? It's all because of her very harmful kinetic connections to the eugenics movement, which is very shocking since she aligned herself with immigrant women, civil rights leaders, and black communities to help her accomplishments be what they were. Personally, I didn't even know what eugenics really meant, so I went to the dictionary.com and I got a simple definition. It is simply put that a belief of improving qualities on the human species and population by discouraging reproductions of people having genetic defects or presumed undesirable traits, or vice versa. For my own and your purposes, I made a little slide that helped put it in a little more simple terms so I'm able to provide a little more examples. First, eugenics was used to divide people, being fit or unfit because of their physical or mental disabilities, so what they have. So it was all there to make sure that those with such disabilities shouldn't even begin to reproduce so that they wouldn't have unfit children as well. This includes those who are poor. They looked at reproduction of having quality people instead of quantity. And Sanger completely believed in that and she was an active part of that movement. This, I'm going to play just a little short clip of a YouTube video by EWTN on speaking out on Planned Parenthood and Margaret Sanger's legacy on race. Men's posts overlooked Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger's writings on race. In her autobiography, Sanger wrote that she spoke at a 1926 Ku Klux Klan rally she characterized her lecture there as a success, writing, quote, I believed I had accomplished my purpose, and that, quote, a dozen invitations to speak to similar groups were proffered. In a 1939 letter to Dr. Clarence Gamble, Singer wrote that to expand her efforts, colored ministers should be hired to help them make their case. Here are her words. Listen to this. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. This disdain for African Americans is not just a stain in the organization's past, it is ongoing in their work today. All right, so going over that video, it showed a few key moments where Margaret Sanger based her whole movement and support on being a eugenicist. Planned Parenthood has said that this is a long overdue action of removing her name on the Manhattan facility specifically, just because simply it is that eugenic idea that people should not have children on if you, on if people like eugenicists de de decide if they are fit or not. I'm attached one more quote to wrap up her idea and being that 
There should be no children when either mother or father suffers from such diseases, such as tuberculosis, gonorrhea, syphilis, cancer, epilepsy, insanity, drunkenness, and mental disorders. No more children should be born when their parents, though healthy themselves, find that their children are physically or mentally defective. So while Margaret Sanger is known as a woman's activist and founder of the birth control movement, she is also seen as a eugenicist with a racist legacy. Thank you all for listening to my final pre presentation for Women's Studies 113. These are my references, and have an amazing day. Thank you.